and giants, it's Alicia Toos, and sitting right beside me is one Paul White. Hello. Yeah, there you go. That and seven bucks will get you a coffee. <laughs> How are you, other than extremely hungry? I'm extremely hungry, yes. I skipped breakfast this morning, been a little busy. It's been a, a crazy couple of days, but uh, we're super excited. Got a big event coming up Sunday. We do, yes. I'm very yeah. glad you brought that up. Fantastic transition into AEW All-In Wembley Stadium. I know for you, you are someone who behind the scenes was talking to Tony, really pitching the fact that you'd love for this to happen one day. I, I, so, no, you did your research. Well, Look at you. It's kind wow. of, kind of Not my good. just a pretty face, a real journalist. <laughs> One of my first meeting with Tony Khan, we were discussing my contract. We were at Jacksonville, at Daly's place in his office. We had ordered steaks, you know how Tony is. And, uh, or if you don't, Tony's a, like, he likes to, to have good steaks and food and talk. So when I was talking to him about what I want to do with AEW, I was like, listen, I, I want to come and do a little commentating, get my feet wet, see if that's something I can do, which I'm very confident now that it's my future down the road is commentating, and wrestle a little bit. And I said, but we've got to get our AEW talent we got to get them in front of a UK crowd. You've got to, like I was thinking about like maybe a little tour we do, you know, London, Sheffield, Birmingham, you know, those little runs because the fans are so passionate. And I was thinking maybe end up with a Dynamite or a pay-per-view at O2 Arena. A little bit different than that. Tony being a billionaire said, yeah, I will do Wembley Stadium and we'll sell that on the brand alone. And you know, like, holy crap. That's how you do it, I guess. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know. <laughs> what a difference though from what you originally went into. Because even an O2 gig, those venues in it themselves are iconic. And I know fans would have right. lost their minds. But of course, like you said, we had to one up that a we little bit. We had to bit. one up it. And boy, did he want. And you know, that's the difference, I guess, between a millionaire and a millionaire and a billionaire. They think on a little bit different level. Like, I would oh, be a fantastic opportunity for us to get into O2 Arena and, <laughs> and like, oh, Wembley Stadium. Oh, sell it out. Yes, oh, yes. Okay, Not I'll bad. just shut up and go over here to the commentary table and make sure my oh, boots are laced up when you're ready. There well, you go. Well, with the commentary comes a lot more traveling to these shows. And you posted this fantastic <laughs> photograph of yourself on a flight saying, did they shrink the planes? Oh. So for you, is it just an, even in first class, is it an absolute nightmare still? It is, it is tough. It's funny, especially from the U.S. to the U.K. because they call it upper class. Uh, Upper class. But it's not. It's your standard business class, which means if you're 6'3 to 6'4 and under and maybe under 230 pounds, it's going to be a very comfortable seat. However, if you're seven foot over 400 pounds, it's like trying to put a fire truck in a mailbox. It just doesn't fit. So the little cubby hole you're supposed to put your, because, oh, it's lay down seating. No, it's not, because <laughs> my feet are too big to go into the little cubby hole and my shoulders are too wide for the seat to lay it back, so. Brutal. Yeah. I, Even I find myself like squealing around in those seats. I couldn't me. imagine. You're huge. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> The huge Paul. chick. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Great like, motivator, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's like um the movie The Animal. Is that where you were quoting uh, that or no? I don't know if I can even say that. No, I but think it was I think it was uh Deuce Bigelow. It was Deuce Bigelow. Deuce Bigelow. Rob Schneider, I mix my films up. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a huge That's a huge Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, well people do that to me, so I mean you know Do they? Yeah. Oh man. No, they don't say the B word, they just say Oh, you're, do you realize how massive you are? No, I had no idea. Thank you for telling me. How annoying does that get? Because it's not like it's been like five years of that. It's It did been a when minute. I was younger because I think when you're a young man and you're seven foot tall in your teens and it's like, you know, everything's, you know, you're, everybody, people are just excited. And I think that's one thing that I've been able to do with pro wrestling is take size and presence and build a wonderful career out of it. And also give people a little bit of joy. Like I have, I, I love the kids, the smaller kids when they meet me, cause some are just like, I'm a giant teddy bear mm -hmm. and they'll just run up and hug my leg. Like uh -huh. they don't even like, oh, is this your child? Would you like it back? Or, <laughs> You're just shaking them a little bit. Yeah, like, okay, let go of my leg, you little knee biter, you know? And then other kids are just looking at you and they're just in such awe and it's a, it's a good responsibility. I'm, I'm thankful for it. Like, you know, there's, there's crosses to bear with not fitting in showers and, not fitting in beds or rental cars or the normal things in life. And then there's the bonuses of having a wonderful career and, and doing a lot of great things and, and making a lot of people smile. Well, we're going to focus on those bonuses and those pros right now because okay. something else that's been happening is you have been on such a wonderful fitness journey as of late. And I oh, recently, thank you. you are so welcome. Wow. But I relate because it's something that I feel like I just started over the last year and just seeing those differences and hitting those goals, like it just is so fulfilling. So what were some of those biggest changes that you 
started putting into effect? Uh, for me, uh, uh, the one thing that I've learned, uh, the first three letters in the word diet is da. So Wow, uh, that hit my soul. <laughs> it hit your soul because when you diet, I think, people go, oh, I just want to lose a few pounds. I just want to lose a few pounds. I just want to do this. Well, you're, you're already setting yourself in a temporary state. Mm -hmm. It's not a diet, it's a lifestyle change. <laughs> right. You have to change the way you eat, and there's no shortcuts. There's no real pill, there's surgeries, there's all this other stuff. But the one thing that I've learned, it just takes commitment and it takes a lifestyle change and making smarter eating habits. And everyone's metabolism is different, everyone's body's different, some foods react better. And taking the time and the patience to stick to it and then stay on it and understand that maybe going out and, you know, Fa diving face first into a box of Krispy Kreme donuts yeah. might not be conducive for your weight loss program. So when you have those urges, just say no. Just say no. Find something else. And then eventually when you get to where you want to be, you'll find that once you get on track, the stuff that you wanted craved so early in the beginning, yeah. They're they're not they're not the same. It's a weird thing, it's right? It's a weird thing. Like you I, think, oh, oh man, like I, I went on a, one of my breaks was I was gonna go to Waffle House. Okay. I'm a redneck from the south. Sorry. To me, I want. Don't wanted, apologize. I like a good Waffle House stop. Yeah, like I wanted like a, a, a double quarter scattered cheese plate smothered and covered, <laughs> bowl of birch chili with cheese and onions and a double. Oh, chocolate you're you're really waffle. a regular. Yeah, I know the menu. <laughs> So I went in and ate all of that and was ill for two days. Like, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. It was, but it wasn't. So now, you know, just make better choices and live a little bit when you can, but just be, make smarter choices. What are the meals you're missing the most? Uh, I miss high calorie meals. I miss like, uh, like uh, angel hair alfredo, chicken parm, uh, uh, twice baked, loaded baked potatoes. Uh, and decadent like, desserts, like really oh, yeah. thick, four-layered, deep forest chocolate cake. I feel so bad because I know I'm getting you more hungry with this question. Yeah, yeah. But... you know what? I started salivating a little bit in the back here. So. <laughs> we see a little dribble. We know yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to go have some grilled chicken, and it's going to be amazing. Lucky you. Yay. Well, before I let you get to that grilled chicken, yes. final question of the day. Yes. We've seen you in everything from Waterboy with Sandler to your own show, The Big Big Show. That dream role, however, what would that be? Oh, wow, that's a great question. Um, I think, honestly, at this stage, like, the the big show show was a personal goal that I achieved because the first time I did Saturday Night Live was fortunate enough to be on it with The Rock, and he was gracious enough to let Mick Foley and Triple H and Vince and I come on the show. Um, I got a bug for that uh, live audience comedy. And I knew, like, if I had a comedy sitcom, I could do well with it. I could... It could be funny and it could be good. And I was really happy that I got that opportunity. It took me years of begging and pleading. I think um, Vince finally gave me that show just because I annoyed the thing of loving crap out of him. So <laughs> He's like, I know how to get him off my back. Yeah, it was like he was doing a deal with Netflix and they want to do a show with a wrestler. It's like, I got one for you. Trust me, I got one. You know, but um, for me, uh, it's hard to find roles at this size because you're going to be tight cast. You're a bodyguard, right. you're a bad guy, and. and uh, in, in uh, oh, the, the movies, and or you're the comedic sidekick sure. that's funny and goofy. Yes, um, I would like to find a role that works where you could really uh, pull some pull some drama out of it. You know, like um, a movie that I watched that I thought was amazing. That as an actor, I was like, holy crap, what a performance! Was the Whale with Brendan Fraser. Um, that one tugged at my heartstrings it was the just, entire it, look, time. It was, it was Beautifully just, done. The sets was small. It was the actor, the small drama, cast. the story, the interaction between the characters. And I was like, wow, that's that's a performance. That's an opportunity um, that would be amazing to get. I mean, yeah, I'll shoot for the moon. Like, yeah, I'd like something like that. No, but, but why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I mean, you know, and the thing is, in the meantime, it's just, you know, continue to build good relationships. And, and once people get to know me and talk to me, they understand that there's hopefully there's a little bit more depth and, and ability and talent and then just getting those opportunities unfortunately right now there's a big strike sag yes. strike and, and my friends in the writers union and my my fellow sag members and stuff we've got to stay strong well i want to wish you the best of luck with that we're Thank you. obviously very excited about this sunday Ooh, AW so all in at Wembley. but i gotta be honest with you though you know, you know who the guy that that i've got my eye on the most right now please tell me 
the devil himself. Oh, the devil, Mr. Yes. MJF. Because I'm looking at the devil and thinking, this whole rigmarole with Adam Cole, I'm not buying it. No? I'm which not. which side aren't you buying, though? Like, where um, in the friendship is the crack? Uh, I don't think MJF is capable of having any true friends. Is And let me be honest about this. He's one of the greatest heels I've seen in our business since Ric Flair in his prime. And that's an accurate statement. I haven't seen a heel that is covers all the dots like MJF does. He's great at promos. He's vicious. He's likable, but not likable. And he also has gotten himself in such tremendous shape, he looks like he could beat somebody up. Right. You know, a lot of talent now don't look like they could beat up a great. He can't. So, to see where he goes further with his character, because uh, I think he's at an all-time high, and I want to see, and I don't know anything creatively or any of that stuff. I'm talking purely as a fan of watching MJF in the ring and his promos and stuff. I'm interested to see how this dynamic goes Sunday and what's going to happen. I mean, I'm just afraid that Adam Cole's head's going to be on a pike no. outside of Wembley Stadium. I don't want our hearts to be broken at this point. I want to uh, see this bromance thrive. No, no, I, no, I'm not. I'm a heal at heart. <laughs> I want I want M, I want MJF to embrace the dark side. Ooh, you really Become want to see the, the devil. Become the Sith Lord, man. Be the Sith Lord. <laughs> Great parting words on that front. Paul, thank you so much thank for taking so much. the time. And to everyone watching, be sure to hit up aliciatoot.com for plenty more exclusive interviews and features. And I'm going to go get some chicken. Woo!